Your Ambassador, Your, Your Excellency, thank you for talking to us uh, today. First of all, our condolences for the uh, loss of life, the huge loss of life on this uh, aeroplane in this tragic accident, it seems, in Tehran. The American, Canadian, British, European intelligence agencies are telling us that this was shot down by the Iranian military, possibly by mistake, and yet this morning uh, authorities in Tehran are insisting this was not possible. Where is the truth and how do you establish the truth between those two positions? The truth uh, should be authenticated and uh, concluded by the experts on the ground, not by some unidentified intelligent officers who cannot uh, accept any responsibilities for any kind of misrepresentation uh, or uh, misconception. Because uh, we are very sorry to say that, unfortunately, the countries that have been rushing to such judgments do not have any access to the hard evidences on the ground. Do they have the black box? Do they have the voice recorder? Do they have the, in fact, the wreckage of the plane uh, in their hands? So on what, just, what basis they are making uh, such, uh, in fact, uh, uh, conclusions that, that are, in fact, uh, uh, cannot be verified at this moment? Based on the international regulations, there are certain procedures that sh should be followed to have a conclusion about the uh, real cause of the incident. And uh, we have in Iran established immediately, uh, in fact, uh, a body to in investigate that. And we have invited a lot of experts from the concerned countries, uh, uh, from Canada, uh, from uh, United States and the Ukraine, of course, and the other exper experts uh, to investigate the, the issue. You say that they are rushing to judgment, but this morning your own government ruled out the possibility of a missile strike. How can they be so sure? How can your government be categorically sure that it hasn't done this? It hasn't been a tragic mistake carried out by its own military? Because they are attributing that this uh, uh, so-claimed mistake has been done by our military. So we are very uh, clear and confident about our military and uh, the missile if it has been, uh, in fact, launched. So we are, uh, in fact, uh, confident from our side that there has been no missile launched in that area at, at that time. But we've seen this video, a number of videos, of what looks like one light flying towards another, then a flash, and then shortly after that, and it's exactly the same place you'd expect a missile strike to happen, very close to where the plane came down. Have you seen those videos? Surely there that's are, pretty compelling, isn't it? There are a lot of footage and such videos that some, some of them are contradicting each other. Even there, there has been a video that the same model of Boeing airplane has been set fire in, in other countries. So, uh, in fact, uh, we should be very careful about not judging uh, on a very critical point on, the, uh, on such videos which we don't know about the, their uh, in fact, validity and if they are very reliable sources. So we should be very, very careful not to uh, jump to any judgments and let the experts see and, uh, in fact, verify first the black box, which is the, f the most important element to help us to uh, have this, the full story and voice recorder. And, in fact, uh, the, the, re the voice of the captain also has been recorded. Uh, and we have the, the, uh, the hard evidences on the ground. So these are the main elements that sh should be verified. Well, talking about the hard evidence on the ground, a CBS film crew has been there, a news crew there today. They, they said that it has been bulldozed. All the evidence seems to have been cleared up. There are scavengers picking the scene apart. There's no cordon. There's no security. Apparently no investigation. That's no way to conduct the aftermath of a terrible plane accident, is it? Uh, are we, in fact, uh, relying on the reporters to have a judgment about a very technical issue? Well, we've seen, we've seen video, we've seen film of bulldozers can clearing you, the area. Can you make a judgment yourself? On Iranian state TV, we've seen bulldozers clearing the area. That doesn't normally happen after a plane accident, does it? Tech, uh, the accidents, plane accidents, are a very technical issue. I cannot judge, you cannot judge. Reporters on the ground cannot judge. Nobody can judge. A foreign minister 
or a prime minister can judge, cannot judge on the issue. The, the experts or the people who can go and find the black box and the hard evidences on the ground, the, uh, for example, the technical team of Canada consisting of 10 people, they are arriving to Tehran. There are other uh, experts who are on the ground. But why is the scene being bulldozed? Why do we have bulldozers out there clearing the evidence? I mean, normally you'd pick up the evidence, you'd map this the is, area, this you'd is clear it off. This is absolutely absurd. The, the hard evidences are there. The black box has been found. The voice recorder has been found. And in fact, uh, uh, there are a number of uh, reports that have been, as you know, when a plane wants to depart, there are uh, technical reports from the engineers to verify the safety and uh, the safety of the plane. These are on the grounds. So nobody can rush to a judgment, be the prime minister or foreign minister or a re reporter or anybody else. This is a quite technical issue and it has a procedure. Annex 13 of the ICO convention has cleared that what is the procedure to go to this issue and find a conclusion. Nobody should, uh, in fact, uh, allow himself to have a rush judgment to these things. The, the, uh, as you said, the victims and the families of victims are, in fact, uh, overwhelmed, and uh, we should not be adding to their anxieties. We should be very careful. This, uh, this, this has a humanitarian aspect, and we should respect the families of the victims to have a calm uh, environment until we have a, a clear conclusion on the ground. I must put this to you, Ambassador, with all due respect. Someone listening might see this as an ambassador for a government for whom it's just simply too embarrassing to admit that they've shot down a plane with 83 of their own nationals on board and therefore engaged in This is in an absurd conclusion from your side. Well, I I'm cannot just accept you what someone listening might conclude. I have been very clear. I cannot accept that you as a reporter can make a judgment on the very technical issue and you're accusing, in fact, uh, a lot of uh, uh, accusations against my country. No, I'm not this is I'm totally not unacceptable. I'm, I'm telling you what someone listening or, or watching I might have explained be my concluding. explanations, and your position is absolutely unacceptable. What's your message to Boris Johnson, who's already concluded that the this same seems thing. to be the work of the a, same thing. a missile he, can, he, 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 he has no access to the hard evidences. He cannot rush to a judgment. He should be careful and he should be patient until we have a conclusive, uh, in fact, uh, report by the experts. The Canadian team is arriving to Iran. The Ukrainian team is already there. We have all experts on the ground. We have the black box. We have all the hard evidences. And this should be judged by the experts on the ground. Full stop. How long will that take? I don't know. Can we talk about the situation that possibly led to this, the assassination of Qasem Soleimani and the missile strikes that happened in response? Can we be confident that I, Iran's response to that I is I cannot accept any relationship between those, these two things. Uh, you say that this is in relation with the assassination of uh, General Soleimani. I cannot accept this. Do you have any evidence? No, I'm saying possibly one thing led to another. So we, they can be so possibilities. There could be so speculations. Well, let me but we should be that very question. careful. The media should play a very constructive role. They should not agitate the people. They should not allow the people would be killed more, more than it is necessary. We should be very careful. I have made my position very clearly when Sky News, unfortunately, uh, had a very wrong statement. Unfortunately, some of the media are publishing uh, unreliable news these, these days. We should be very careful. I think the, we should be value the lives of the innocent people and we should not be adding to the provocations. Well, let's reframe that question. The assassination of Qasem Soleimani has led to a response from Iran. Can we be confident that that's it? The Trump administration says that Iran is backing down. Will we see any more retaliation from your government as to what happened to your revered commander? We don't care about the US, US reaction, US assessment. We have said when uh, we retaliated, 
uh, in act of self-defense. We said that that would be the action by Iran in, uh, in accordance with the Charter of the United Nations to have a self-defense. And we have not devised any other attack against the uh, US bases. And uh, as we have said so clearly, Iran is not seeking uh, escalation or war. There's also concern about the Iranian nuclear deal, the JCPOA. Is it effectively dead, do you think? No. In fact, uh, we think that uh, it's in a very critical condition, but that should be the de determination of all parties if we want to, to in fact, uh, uh, have the deal working. We think that the measures that Iran has adopted would allow the deal uh, still be functioning well if there is a determination. Uh, we have uh, opened the possibilities for more negotiations and diplomacy. There are a lot of uh, discussions here and there. There are a lot of talks about the uh, countries concerned. And still, we think that there is an opportunity to save the, the deal. It's been a very difficult start to the year for your government and for other governments in the region. You have been a seasoned observer of Western governments. You helped negotiate that nuclear deal. You know your government very well. How worried do you think we should be about what's happening in the region? Uh, as I said, we should contain our emotions. And in fact, we should be really trying to uh, find solutions for the for the differences and, and conflict that we are, uh, it could be uh, ahead of us. Uh, JCPOA is a very fundamental uh, uh, diplomatic effort by the countries concerned, uh, in fact, to uh, strengthen peace and security at the global and regional level. Unfortunately, the United States withdrew from the deal and adopted a very dangerous path of uh, in fact, maximum pressure policy against Iran, which has been uh, cleared more than before that it's a failed policy. And unfortunately, they are again uh, uh, emphasizing on their wrong path. And we are uh, very sorry again that President Trump uh, mentioned that we, they want to increase the, the, in fact, the sanction against Iran. That would not be a helpful policy, that would be a wrong policy. And uh, as far as the United States would not change its policy, uh, we could be facing with the, uh, the uncertainties and even conflicts in the, re in the region. So we hope that they would come uh, with the realities and change their course. President Trump astonished everybody by carrying out this um, assassination on a general from another sovereign state. Um, if America does anything more, what will Iran do? How will you respond? Our measures always are very measured and calculated. Uh, we see what's happening on the ground. We would not react to the emotions or tweets or whatever. We, in fact, we attach great uh, care to these incidents and uh, we would be very careful to see if there are uh, wrong policies on the ground, we would certainly react uh, appropriately and proportionately. We hope that they would uh, have a lesson. They, we hope that they would uh, learn from, from the lessons in the past and in these days and really uh, be trying sincerely to, to change the course. Otherwise, unfortunately, as we have seen, uh, there could be uh, uh, misunderstandings, misconceptions, and even miscalculations uh, in the uh, foreseeable future. I hope that we would give more certainty by changing course. I mean, certain members of your government have, have promised harsher revenge. Are we going to see more retaliation from either the Iranian government or its allies in the region? As I said, we have not uh, designed or we have not thought about any more retaliation at this stage. And we, we really hope that they would be very cautious to go to a path which would be, uh, in fact, uh, 
uh, adding to the conflict and adding to the, uh, in fact, the, uh, or escalating the, the situation furthermore. One last question. I think many people in Britain don't understand who Qasem Soleimani was and what he meant to the Iranian people. What was your reaction personally when you heard what had happened to him? He was a national hero in Iran because he was active during all stages of resistance and, and the fight to gain independence after the Islamic Revolution. And particularly during these recent years, because of his, uh, uh, in fact, uh, heroic actions on the ground to fight against terrorism, particularly Daesh and extremism in the region, he was so much uh, supported by the people. So he was seen as a national hero. And uh, we, have, we have lost a very uh, beloved son of our nation. And as you have seen, the uh, sentiment of the people has been very extraordinary. Ambassador, thank you very much. Thank you.